Hey friends, welcome back. So in today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the health benefits of sauna therapy. Sauna therapy is really hot right now. There's a lot of people that are building their own saunas, buying their own saunas. Many different health clubs have saunas. People buy sauna blankets. I'm a fan of whatever sauna therapy or heat therapy you can get access to and you can afford. If all you can get access to is like a heated blanket and you wrap it around your legs after a long day of sitting, I'm a fan of that. And you'll you'll hear in this video and learn why that is beneficial and the health benefits of this from whole body glucose metabolism to improved microvasculature in, in terms of circulation uh, for individuals that have poor circulation or varicose veins. You might wanna keep paying attention. Uh, vital capacity or lung capacity, obviously, uh, amid a respiratory virus pandemic, this is important. So you can improve your vital capacity when you go in the sauna. Uh, from reducing dementia and Alzheimer's and all-cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality, as we reviewed on a recent video, 690,000 people died in the year 2020 from heart disease. So this is why sauna therapy uh, is medicine. This is There's a lot of health benefits here. There's been long-term prospective studies that have followed cohorts of individuals showing that the frequency and the duration of sauna therapy reduces all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, sudden cardiac death, and there's a 65 and 66% reduction respectively in dementia and Alzheimer's. But that's not it. The list goes on and on. We're gonna to talk today about lung health, bone health, what happens to the bones and stem cells. There's so much exciting stuff we're gonna get into. So let me flip this over so we can first talk about heat as medicine and really sauna as medicine. But you can swap out sauna for an infrared blanket, for an infrared sauna, for even a hot tub, because we're gonna talk about this and explore this. But first, I just wanna welcome you. It's Mike Mutzel. As always, I'm grateful that you're here. If at any point you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. That just lets me know that I should do more videos on this. And I think what we'll end up doing is more sauna therapy videos because the science is overwhelming. And I also wanna thank this video show sponsor, Skillshare.com, the largest and leading online network where you can learn a range of different skills from entrepreneurship to leadership to public speaking. And I started using Skillshare, as I told you before, back in 2012 to learn how to create Photoshop thumbnails. Uh, some of the thumbnails that you see on this channel I've made myself through learning skills that I learned from Skillshare.com. Now, what's really cool, friends, is you can get a free trial membership and the first 1,000 people that click the links below get access to this. Now, I would take advantage of it because you can download their amazing app. I use it right on my phone all the time when I'm out walking, you know, for example, walking my dog in the morning, getting natural sunlight in my retina to influence my body's circadian clock system or feeding the chickens. I'm learning and you should learn too. They have amazing things to learn about how to manage your business, how to assess the finances in your own personal household or in your business. These are skills, friends, that are invaluable. The link below, the first 1,000 people that take advantage of that get a free trial membership. After that, it's under $12 a month for a membership. So let's continue on with the science of heat. Now, there's a lot of, again, we can go on about all the benefits, but I just want you to sort of understand what happens when you get hot and your body's natural response to heat because that sort of will help you remember the health benefits of this and be able to sort of regurgitate this to other people. Okay, so when you start to get hot, the body has a natural mechanism to divert heat away from the core to the periphery, okay? So this starts to get hot. I'm just gonna draw like some, scratches here, I'm not a good artist, right? But you can understand, you start to get hot, so what's going to happen is blood flow is going to increase to the periphery. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna divert or shunt blood away from the core to the periphery. Now, here's what's kind of cool about this, so you're getting a lot of blood going to your muscles. People that don't exercise are not getting a lot of blood to their muscles. Now we're gonna talk about the venous return in a moment here via this hunting response. This is a physiologic response if you add in cold therapy on top of your heat therapy. So you're stressing the system, creating this rubber band effect, as Glenn talked about in the podcast we did with Glenn Arba. So that's in blue for cold. We're gonna dive into that in a moment. But let me just first unpack this. This is the most critical lesson of this video, okay? So you start to get warm. Now, what happens is this induces what's called nitric oxide. You've heard of nitric oxide induced vasodilation. So your arteries can be dilated or constricted, okay? When you start to get hot, there's natural mechanisms to induce some of the adaptations so your muscles, that the smooth muscle on the, the microvasculature and the, your, your blood vessels start to get a little workout. A lot of people are not getting this workout because they don't exercise. So people that don't exercise on a minimum should be in the sauna because you're getting a cardiovascular workout by just getting hot. You're, you're training those pathways so that you have more flexibility. 
So there's uh, all sorts of ways to sort of look at this with uh, vasoflow mediated dilation. There's uh, arterial stiffness uh, sort of tests with vascular elasticity, different ways to look at this. We did this with Scott Vander Whelan way back in 2015 where I did my own um, vascular elasticity test. So I'll link that video, but, but there's a lot of benefits to having uh, you know endothelial health. So the small little cells that comprise your vessels can become dysfunctional, and that's called endothelial dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction is sort of this prerequisite to developing further cardiovascular complications. Erectile dysfunction is due to endothelial dysfunction. So for people that have sexual dysfunction, this is a really a cardiovascular etiology. In fact, severe COVID is endothelial is a is a disease of the endothelium. I'll, I'll flash up a paper that has elucidated that. Okay, so you get by getting hot you're exercising your endothelium. Again, this is the functional unit of your cardiovascular system, which is important. Now, along those lines, what sort of happens? Now, you start to increase what's called angiogenesis in your skeletal muscle. So you start to send blood to your skeletal muscle. Your skeletal muscle is saying, okay, we don't know what to do with it, so we're gonna create these new blood vessels. So angiogenesis is favorable in your muscle tissue. So you start to create angiogenesis. You start to improve microvascular circulation in the, in the microvessels. Now, I'm hypothesizing, but I, I think that probably there's some lymphatic return as well. So you start to improve your lymphatic uh, system. Now, the immune system gets a lot of benefits when you get hot, because what happens is you activate these things called heat shock proteins. Now, the physiology of heat shock proteins, we're not gonna explore too much here, but you know, interleukin-6, and there's different interleukins that are short-term increased along with the uh, heat shock proteins that favorably impact the immune system and signaling, but also reduce uh, free radical stressors. So there's antioxidant response elements that are activated. So a lot of people are concerned about free radicals, there's this whole free radical theory of aging, you can help to reduce the free radical burden in your body. And all sorts of different immune system cells are activated or increased. Neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, T lymphocytes, all of these things, and their phagocytic capacity is improved when you go in the sauna. So again, everyone's concerned about their immune system now, why not consider some therapy as an adjunctive lifestyle treatment uh, that, that can help there? The brain, there's so many different benefits of the brain and I just elucidated and, and highlighted as, uh, during the introduction of this video some of the benefits in terms of outcomes with a 60 and 65 and 66% reduction in dementia and Alzheimer's disease in a cohort that's been followed now for 26 years in Finland. Um, Jonas Lunkanen, uh, I think is how you pronounce his last name, has been following this cohort and has, there's been a lot of uh, data that has been emerged from that. Personally, you know, what I found when I go in the sauna is just my memory just works better. Uh, and part of that could be due to the fact that your, your, your brain, you know, the central nervous system tissue can't get too hot. So your brain's trying to dump uh, blood and so forth when you get hot, send it to the periphery and just improving the, the circulation and probably through this angiogenesis or the microvessels, uh, there's some improvement there. There's also been a change in what's called brain derived brain derived uh, brain natriuretic hormone, I think is what it is, or peptide. And this naturesis peptide is, is involved in osmotic regulation in the blood. Uh, when that's high, it's, it's linked with uh, elevated blood pressure. And if I haven't yet mentioned it, that's one of the main benefits here. There's a lot of people that have high blood pressure that are on blood pressure medications. Uh, several different studies in people that, that have elevated blood pressure and are wearing 24-hour blood pressure monitors, there's an almost immediate reduction in blood pressure. So this is amazing. Again, why, why is that? Well, it has to do with giving your microvasculature system a workout. So again, tons of benefits, but let's talk about the bone. So this is, I think, really interesting. I'm drawing just a really crude bone here. So we talked about blood moving all around. When you get hot, you're sending more blood to your bones and your bone responds by, in, by releasing stem cells. So this is one of the benefits when it comes to longevity and associated effects of the sauna is you're improving red bone marrow and bone marrow circulation. So again, amazing because when else besides exercise are you actually causing stimulation of the you know the vessels and that demand uh, to your bone not, not not many people are exercising sufficiently to cause uh, increased circulation in the bone so 
To me, this is exciting, and there's been several studies that have found uh, levels. I think it was CD45. I could be wrong on that, um, but there was a, a, a it's a, a proxy of stem cell activation in the bone that was increased uh, with sauna therapy. So. A lot of benefits here, so let's just kind of summarize. Oh, actually, you know what? I want to get into this hunting response. So this is where contrast really comes in. So let's just let's just pause. I'm going to go off script here and kind of, not that I was on script before, but um, you start to get really hot. Okay, so you get all this blood is moving away from your core to your periphery. Okay, so then what happens? Okay, so your vessels are dilated. The 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 adaptations the body's trying to do is dissipate heat, dissipate heat, sweat, blood volume is you know you're moving a lot of blood around, right? Your heart's working. We'll talk about the heart again in a second. Now. You're really hot and then you go into, you take a cold shower, you go into the ocean, you go into a cold lake. What happens? Cold. It's the reverse. Okay, so this is the magic, I think, of this rubber band theory that Glenn Arbaugh has talked about, where you get hot and then you get cold and naturally this is where, you know, saunas are positioned on a lake or a river near the ocean, you know, in different uh, Nordic countries and things like that. So what happens is your blood vessels constrict when you get cold and blood is sent back to the periphery. But it's not just once, it's over a, a 90 minute period. This is where cold thermogenesis and heat combined as a therapy is really exciting because there's this phenomenon called this hunting response. If you get cold and say your fingers are really cold and then you warm them up, it's, it's not like that's one and done. Your, your muscles start to contract and then blood flow will increase again over the course of 90 minutes. So this is what's really exciting. A lot of people have peripheral edema, peripheral vascular disease, they have poor blood circulation, poor blood flow, you know, cellulite and varicose veins in these things, which are indicators of vessel disease. So the science, if you get hot and then cold in your periphery, you're helping to return some of that junk, that crap, that stagnation. There's a lot of research on stagnant lymph as being a driver of inflammation. So this hunting response is cool because again, this is sort of mediated unconsciously, obviously. You're not thinking about this, but if you get really cold hands and then warm them up, there's gonna be this cycle of increased blood flow and muscular contractions without you even knowing about it over the course of 90 minutes, which I think is, is quite fascinating. So let's go back here and sort of summarize. Uh, I know I've been talking fast, I get excited about this stuff. I think it's really amazing in terms of a lifestyle modality, a therapy, a treatment. So number one, we, in my estimation, based upon the research and especially these prospective long-term studies in humans, some of the benefits, the, the, the most interesting benefits are to the cardiovascular and microvasculature system. So uh, we have here just overall cardiovascular and microvascular health. So you're exercising your endothelium, which is the functional unit of your, your blood vessel system. So I think that's really exciting. There's angiogenesis increasing, there's endothelial and nitric oxide synthase, there's all these things are increased when you get hot. So that's great. So that's number one. Number two, the muscle. So we know that uh, part of the adaptation is ca increased capillary density with exercise. So exercise is great. A lot of people say, I don't have time to exercise. I, I don't like exercise. I have bad hips. I have bad this, I have bad that. Okay, well, you still should exercise. Okay, so figure out something you can do. But here's why sauna is great, because you're also improving some of those vascular sort of adaptations that are linked with exercise. And if you dovetail exercise with heat therapy, that's even, even better. So that, that is an option. So the, the musculature is getting a lot of blood and it has to deal with that blood. And so you get improvements in circulation. So that's cool. So the muscles now, the heart and the brain, we already sort of talked about some of the outcome, but what's not yet known is the direct effects on the myocardium, which is the muscle of the heart and heat therapy and sauna stress. We know that exercises, exercise and aerobic exercise specifically directly affect the myocardium. It's not yet known if sauna therapy or heat therapy directly impacts those musculature, the, the muscles there. But what is known is there is a reduction in blood pressure and an improvement in heart rate variability. So HRV, heart rate variability. Higher is better here. We know that resting heart rate and pulse rate and all that, you want that to be lower. But heart rate variability is, is sort of this crosstalk between the heart and the brain and improvements in HRV are two thumbs up. Uh, just to make a long story short, we've had many other videos on that. But 
I have here an, an article um, from, a, from a, a paper titled Clinical Effects of Regular Dry Sauna Bathing, a Systematic Review. And I would like to just read a few things uh, here about vasodilation and so forth. So mechanism of action, sauna therapy. Several mechanisms of actions have been proposed of, <clears throat> and so the title here is Mechanisms of Action, and so the title here is Mechanisms of Action, Sauna Bathing. Several mechanisms of action have been proposed for the health benefits of frequent sauna bathing. Uh, exposure to heat increases cardiac output and reduces peripheral vascular resistance and induces other physiologic changes in the cardiovascular parameters, such as decreased systolic or diastolic blood pressure. So that's good. We just talked about that. Increased heart rate variability. We just mentioned that uh, right here. Uh, we have improved cardiac functional markers. So this would be things like um, uh, endothelial function, uh, vascular elasticity markers, and so forth. Improved cardiac, uh, I'm sorry, and improved blood flow mediated arterial and vascular di dilation of the small and or large blood vessels. Um, regarding hormone and metabolic models, uh, reduce epinephrine and norepinephrine. So these are markers of the stress response. Um, so those get reduced. They're increased transiently, but reduced successively over time. Uh, increased levels of nitric oxide metabolites. We talked about that. Uh, we have uh, decreased total and, and uh, LDL, so cholesterol, uh, improvements in growth hormone. We have decreases in fasting, uh, glucose, and much more. So regarding the muscle to go back there, several studies in diabetic patients where they just have people that have type 2 diabetes sit in a chair and they warm up their legs and they have improved glucose clearance in their legs so this is good because we've talked a lot about being sedentary how the the mus the, the muscle tissue of the legs is select it can be sort of in insulin resistance can be induced in that that musculature and there's a predisposition towards uh, insulin resistance development in the legs compared to the upper body. So we've talked about that before. So the list goes on and on and on. Um, we talked about the bone and the stem cells and the improved circulation. So you have, again, we have the vessels, we have the muscle, we have the heart-brain connection, we have bone, we have the immune system and the heat shock protein antioxidant response elements. So that is amazing, the phagocytic capacity. And last, but certainly not least, we have the lungs. So we know that, that vital capacity, the ability to inhale and exhale large amounts of, and, and properly fuel the body uh, with oxygen and, and, and get rid of waste is, is important, right? We, we know that this is important, we're, especially right now during the midst of a respiratory virus pandemic where people are unable to oxygenate uh, the, their blood and they're not able to get deep breaths. Well, I mean, we have a therapy here that, that covers many different facets of what people are dealing with right now. It's not being discussed. So please share this message. Let's make it loud and clear that sauna is medicine. We'll talk more about frequency duration in another video, but just to make it real short here, uh, to, you know, and we'll talk about the nuances uh, in other videos, go in as long as you can until you feel uncomfortable. And so, you know, what I like to do, we have a sauna that gets up to 230 degrees. I don't go that hot every single day. Some days, if I feel like I'm really recovered and, and life is good, I'm not stressed out and you know feeling like I'm burning the candle at both ends because sauna therapy getting hot is a physiologic stressor, okay? So if you're already psychologically stressed, mentally stressed, um, you know, you did a hard workout, you're, you didn't get much sleep, don't go beat yourself up in the sauna because that can, you know, you don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul. And so, you know, some days where I'm feeling really burnt out, really tired, uh, overtrained or something like that, overworked, then you know what? I'll go a little bit lighter in the sauna and go a little bit lower in the temperature. Days where I'm like, let's go. I got tons of energy, feeling great. So I'll do multiple rounds at 220 degrees, right? Where I'm getting really, really hot to the point of like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. So anyway, I want you to, to use your intuition when you go in the sauna. Some people say, well, what about the infrared sauna? What about the classic finish sauna? The sauna that you can afford and the sauna that you will use is the best sauna for you. If you're not going to take the time to build a fire, to make you know a, a warm classic finish sauna, and you just want to set it and forget it, turn on a button, then the classic finish sauna with a wood burning stove is not for you. You should get an infrared sauna, hit the button, and go. The downside with the infrared sauna is it's a dry heat, whereas you get a real wet heat because you're pouring water on the rocks in on the wood burning stove. So they are different, yes, but there still is benefits of an infrared sauna. It's called Waon therapy, W-A-O-N. In Japan, there's a lot of research in Japan on infrared sauna. So 
Those are sort of benefits. Now, if you don't have access to any of those, you can do use a sauna blanket. Check out higherdose.com. Uh, no financial affiliation, but they do sell a sauna blanket. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Let's just make uh, healthy living great again and encourage people to get warm because of all these benefits to the microvascular system, the blood, uh, the heart, the, the bone, the lungs. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. So friends, thanks as always for tuning all the way into this video. If you enjoyed it and you want more, please hit that like button. I would love to know your comments below, uh, what you think about sauna science and the science of heat and if you regularly sauna and what that's like for you. And please support our show sponsor and the great offer that Skillshare has by clicking the link below where you can get a free trial membership. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you on a future video down the road. And as always, I'm grateful that you watch all the way to the end. All right, we'll catch you soon. Bye now. Yeah.